You know the craziest part about this uh, last kind of 10-ish game stretch? The Kings haven't been statistically eliminated yet. It's possible they did tonight. I would have to do a lot more math than I uh, feel like doing right now, and no one's announced it yet. The Ottawa Senators are officially out of the playoff race. They're the only one that has statistically been eliminated from going to the playoffs this year. Now, the Kings cannot be far behind. But that just goes to show you how bad everyone else in the West is. I mean, the playoff race is so close for the wild cards. The only team so far, unless the Sharks won, which I don't believe they did, that has officially clinched a spot is Tampa. Which, obviously, because they're Tampa. They're so freaking good this year, and I would love to see them go all the way, since at this point, neither one of my teams look like they're going to make it, and I'm pretty much down to, I will cheer for anyone who is playing Vegas or uh, Pittsburgh or San Jose. That's pretty much my list of teams I want not to win, and everybody else, good luck, I guess. Nashville is probably going to need to play better than they played tonight, though, if they're going to get very far, because for at least a period and a half, the Kings look like they might actually be in this game. It was kind of exciting, actually. And Nashville's really good, so to see them actually competing at a level against Nashville, I was like, oh my gosh, this is a glimpse of the team that I love so much. Where have you been all season? And then, of course, it went downhill as soon as... Uh, some things happen in the second, which I'll get to. So the first period looked really even. Shots were basically even. They were like 10 and 9 or something like that. Um, the only thing that was different in the statistics in the first period is that the Kings had eight hits and Nashville had one. I don't understand how that happened because Nashville is nicknamed Smashville for a reason. And it didn't seem like the Kings were laying on particularly big hits, to my eyes anyway, but it was very shocking to see that for a good 12 minutes, it was seven to nothing in hits. Like the Nashville didn't have any until the last couple of minutes of, of the first period. I was like, I don't really understand what's happening there. So they had the first power play. FNAF went for tripping. Damn it, FNAF, I like you, but I, I need you to be just like a little bit better on the ice, please. That'd be great. So their power play is, I believe, the worst in the league. And you can tell because we had more shorthanded chances than they had actual shots on goal. We had Kopitar, we had Roy. Yes, it's Roy. I keep wanting to say Wa because that's how Patrick Wa pronounced the same spelling of his name. Uh, there were a couple other players that did really well on the penalty kill there. So when Brown got hit in the face with a high stick and went down, uh, thank you for taking one for the team, Dustin Brown. Always such a such a leader. No, but for seriously though, you know I love Dustin Brown. So I was actually kind of excited when we got a power play. I'm like, oh, okay. Well, you know, they sucked at theirs, so maybe we can, oh, wait, suck at ours even more. It was quite pathetic, and I thought Nashville's was pretty pathetic, but for a while there, I had to remind myself, power play's the one where we get the extra player, right? Has anyone told the Kings that? Because... Maybe I've been watching hockey wrong all this time. No, we're just really, really bad. We're so bad, in fact, that by the time we actually set up a play, it was the last, like, 15 seconds, and there were three incredible shots. Just three really, really great chances in rapid succession that Rene got all of, and then the rebound went out, and because it was still technically in power play, it wasn't called for icing, dude comes out of the box, and sure enough, bam! immediately as it is ending while all the kings are still kind of like oh where but down by Rene, where did the puck go oh in the net over there okay yeah it's the most la kings thing to like ever happen it's just <sighs> so one is in it's you know it didn't actually get to them which was good to see they immediately got another power play like within 17 seconds of the goal being scored. I'm not sure we wanted one though after the performance of the last one. I was like, it's cool. We can reject. Can we reject power plays? Is that a thing? Like it's, it's okay. You guys, you, we just stick with the five on five. It's fine. That power play wasn't quite as pathetic, thankfully. Uh, but it did not lead to a goal, nor did the rest of the period. 
which for Toffoli in particular was quite disappointing because damn, Toffoli got to the net so many times. I counted at least five where I was like, oh, Toffoli, like good job. But he didn't finish any of them, which is probably why he was benched for the first six minutes and 15 seconds of the second period, like did not get to play on the ice. And he was fine, just Desjardins didn't put him in. I just, he had so much potential when he first started. He was so good. Now I'm just along with the rest of the team there who basically shut down eventually. They did do one good thing. They got the tying goal. Awesome. And it's the youngsters. It's all it's all the rookies that are playing really well and Trevor Lewis and Dustin Brown. Cuz Dustin Brown always going to the net, always making heads. Captain my captain. But Trevor Lewis is the one who makes the play here to Wagner, who has 10 goals this season. He hasn't played, I think it's 50 games. He's played 50 games as of tonight. And he has 10 goals, which if you look at the other point leaders in the Kings, you have Kopitar, who has 19 goals, and he's played in 60 games, I believe. And then you have Brown, who has 17 goals and has played in... No, Kopitar must be at 70 because uh, uh, Brown is at 60 and Kovalchuk is at 60 games and he has uh, 14 goals. So if you get a kid like Wagner who's new this season and he's got 10 in kind of as many games, that's, that's pretty good for the Kings this season. So Lewis sets it up. Beautiful cross ice pass, like just stunning. Oh my gosh, Trevor Lewis, this is why we love you because that little play set up wider and she just kind of tipped that puck in there. Rene had no chance of being able to come back up and get that. So Wagner gets his 10th. Roy gets his first NHL point. Congratulations. Like I said, the rookies are the ones stepping up. Grunderstam is, has, or had two goals in two games, which obviously was not sustainable, but really nice way to start his career. He had some good ice time tonight. Um, he, I think it was him, Kempe, and Toffoli were on a line. And I think if you switch out to Foley with, I don't know, maybe Wagner, actually, that would be an incredibly fast line. And I would love to see how that progresses as the Kings begin their rebuild. <laughs> yeah, it's definitely happening. I'm still not in the lose for Hughes camp. It is not happening. I want to play with dignity, even in our last <sighs> sad, sad little games that we have left. Dignity is important, which the Kings had pretty much up until that point, And then definitely as they were tied until the last like two or three minutes of the second period, they, they gave up the go ahead goal and it was, it was a rough goal to give up. It was a really, really rough goal to give up. And then a couple of minutes later, they gave up the next one. And it was just mar a fumble by Martinez in the neutral zone, just stripped of the puck like an amateur. And, and sure enough, like unassisted goal there. And Quick just, yeah, he bit in one direction, went too far. And then the other direction, puck is in the net. And there were actually a couple of scary moments before that where the Kings were actually playing when it was still tied and we had like four defensemen, like Quick was so far out of his net, he almost wasn't even in the blue paint anymore and he had like three defensemen go down on the play, Dowdy made a great stop. So they hadn't given up yet, but then that second one went in and it was like, eh, okay, you know, again, two to one, not a bad way to end the second, but that third one went in. And that's when the life just died out of them completely. I just, I just wanted them to make it through the end of the second period and maybe come back with some life in, in the third. And that just didn't happen. Like the whole third period, all I was saying was like, do something, just, just, just play hockey. And they just didn't have it. They don't have the finish that they've had in previous seasons. So even pulling quick with two and a half minutes left unsurprisingly didn't work. I know, weird, right? There was no empty net goal, but there was really just no satisfaction at all in the third period. Nothing was really kind of going anywhere, which is really the story of the Kings whole season. So what I would like to see, hey Desjardins, are you listening? <laughs> what I would like to see is to give those rookies that are going to be coming up in the system, I'd like to see them get more ice time because Carter, Kopitar, Toffoli, those guys are vets. 
they're not really doing it and hoping and wishing that they would and putting them out there when there's an empty net isn't going to make it happen. So let's see what these new kids can do because we literally have nothing to lose. Statistically, they admit that may be untrue, but like really we're not making the playoffs. So 